Welcome class to a Coach Joe workshop. In this lesson, we will review best practices for unit testing. Unit testing is one of the primary types of software testing. It is a fast and reliable way to ensure the code works and prevent most bugs from being deployed. Like writing production code, there are some best practices to follow when writing unit tests. Here are several common and effective examples. Developers can be unproductive while waiting for slow tests to execute. A suite of 1,000 tests, each taking 4 tenths of a second, will run over 6 minutes. Notice the quicker tests will greatly reduce the overall time. Setting a maximum time that should not be exceeded is objective. You and your team will likely encounter thousands, if not tens of thousands of tests. Based on the number of tests, try to make the overall wait time reasonable. Do everything in your power to make them fast. Simple is a little objective, but here are a few considerations. A unit test should have few lines of code. Five or less is great. As more lines are added, the test becomes less simple. Complex test setup is sometimes necessary. Utilize the before each test setup method. Also consider making a well-named private method to help keep the test simple. Logic in the test takes away from simplicity. Avoid any form of implementation logic, conditionals, or loops. Similar to keeping them simple, they should be easy to read. The test serves as documentation for other developers. If a new developer cannot understand the test, how will they understand the production code? Keep it simple to read. Don't test multiple use cases in a single unit test. When the test fails, it takes time to isolate which case broke the test. Instead, create one test for each use case. A good practice is to utilize arrange, act, assert, or given when then. Arrange some data that prepares the test. Only test or act on one action, then assert the test case passes. If the test does not pass, you will know the exact use case that failed. A test should not pass one time and fail another time with no code change. This kind of test is not deterministic. Instead, a test should have consistent results every time. A test should be completely isolated. One test should not depend on another test. Avoid random numbers, date, time, or local settings of the current computer. And finally, external dependencies. This leads us to the next best practice. External dependencies like the file system, databases, web services, and many others should be removed from the test. They will slow down the test and possibly produce inconsistent results. A mock object or test double can be used to simulate these dependencies while making the test faster and more reliable. Test doubles help developers isolate on the unit of code to be tested by controlling external dependencies. Be sure to take advantage of these test doubles whenever possible. The two main reasons for testing is to ensure the code works as expected and prevent deploying bad code. During the build process of the deployment, if the automated test detects a failure, the build will fail. Make sure the tests are part of the build and deployment process. Test-driven development is a software process where test cases and application code are written in parallel. It is preferred to write a test, then write enough code to make the test pass. Maybe a little refactoring is needed. Repeat this process over and over until your code is completed. Some developers will write the code first, then the test. I'm not here to judge which approach is best. I find it beneficial that the end result is working code with supporting tests. It is common for developers to test the happy path situations. Often, the test suite fails to cover the unexpected situations like edge cases, invalid user input, and unexpected data from outside sources. 
be sure to put a little testing thought into what can go wrong while proving the code works. Consider this assert statement. It will fail. The error message indicates expected true, but the actual is false. This is not enough information to be useful. The developer must investigate the code to correct the test. Although the test identified an issue, consider the assert equal statement. Again, this test will fail. The error message now reads, expected 5, actual was 7. Now the developer has more useful information to correct the test. There are many different styles for creating a good naming convention. It might be a difficult team decision, but worth the effort. Try to reveal the intent of the test. A good name can help in the logs when a test fails and also serves as documentation for other developers. Test a private method? This can be a hotly debated topic, but the evidence supports the avoidance of directly testing private methods. Most languages have the ability to directly call a private method. Avoid this. The test code will have more lines of code, become harder to read, and much harder to maintain. If explicit testing is required, consider a design change by making it public inside a utility or helper class. I challenge you to write better unit tests by following these best practices. Leave a comment down below with other best practices you and your team follow. Look for other helpful Coach Joe videos. Remember, future senior developers, make it work, prove it works, then make it better. Ready? Break! <laughs>